I'm going to show you how to do this with state of the art technology. I've spent all the revenue from YouTube into this. I'm going to show you how to paint gems with raster wash. And in order to do that, let's first check out how gems used to be painted back in the day. Now, in this book, there are very good examples of gems within the high elf army over here. And we can see that they have a system where you can see like a degradé inside the gem. This is prevalent in all the 4th, 5th edition, 6th edition miniatures of the era. There are so many gems. I painted many, many gems. I have a high elf army and I have been painting gems for a while. So more or less, I have an idea of how to do this in a particular way that is easy. All right. So now that we've seen the book, I'm going to show you how to do this with state of the art technology. I've spent all the revenue that I had from YouTube into this. So please subscribe so I can maintain this quality from now onwards. <clears throat> yeah, they had us the first half. I'm not going to lie. Okay. First of all, we have to decide two things. One is what color are we going to paint the gem? In this case, I decided to do it in blue. So I'm going to choose colors that are within that range, blue. And then I also need to focus on the source of light. Where is it going to come from? Now, they usually should be within one of these corners. It's up to you to decide which one you want to do that. But if you decide on one, you have to basically paint all the gems in the miniature coming from the same focus or the same source of light. In this case, I chose this one. Back in the day when you used to paint with uh, layers, I used to paint with layers. So nobody cares. Yeah. We primed in black and when you prime in black, you go like this. Everything is black and then you paint with the darker color all from here down and then you paint with a little bit lighter color all from here downwards, two thirds of the gem. And then the last one will be the lightest color on this corner. And then with pure white, you will do a dot here and a line or something like that here. That's the usual method that I use. Some people will use a very light color in here instead of pure white, etc. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter! The effect is more or less the same. The light will be traveling through the gem and the point of exit is the one that is lightest. Now, when you rush the wash, you have to do things a little bit different. Let's pretend that I have a gem right here. Okay, so I decided my color, my source, the source is gonna be here. What I do, because it's prime white, is I'm gonna do a glaze with the lightest of the colors that I have. In this case, it will be this blue. The whole gem is gonna be glazed with this color. A very light glaze, so I leave a semi-translucent wash on top of that white. And then I use a little bit darker, and I go two thirds onwards towards the source of light. And then I use the darkest one on the last third of the gem. I finish it up by just putting a dot of white in here and a little bit here. Here we go. Here we go. And more or less, the effect is the same. Nice. So you will have a dark area in here with that white dot and then you have a light area going downwards and you will have the transition of colors from dark which we washed last towards lightest which we washed first and the in-betweens for the end with pure white paint and something like that. They're the same picture. I'm going to show you the examples now with the elder. An easy way to paint emeralds or green gems is starting with warp lining, building up through orc flesh and finishing it off with dark angels green, and then just put a small dot on the corners that I told you before. So the first one is going to be warp lining, then we're gonna apply a little bit of orc flesh on the corner where the light is going to be hitting from, and we finish it off with dark angels green in the same corner, but instead of painting Two thirds, we're gonna paint only one third of the gem. We're gonna get pure white, in this case, it's going to be a white scar, and I'm gonna put a small dot in that corner where it's darkest, and on the opposite, I'm gonna try to paint a small line like that. For amethyst like gems, we're gonna start with Volupus Pink, follow up by Magus Purple, and then Sheesh Purple. 
We start by painting the whole gem with the Volupus Pink paint and then we chose the corner where the light is going to be hitting from and we're going to paint that one with Magus Purple, the two thirds of the highest side of the gem. To finish it up, we're going to use She is Purple, which is quite dark, and we're just going to paint the corner where the light is hitting from and that's where we're going to do at the end one dot on pure white and at the opposite side we're going to do another one or a small line with the same color. The last type of gem I'm going to show you how to paint today are rubies and for this we're going to need Blood Angels Red, Flesh Terrors Red and Lupus Pink. We're going to start with Blood Angels Red painting the whole gem and then we're going to do the two thirds on the top with Flesh Terrors Red. To finish it off we're going to paint the side where the light is inside and from with Volupus Pink and as usual we're going to put one dot of pure white paint in both the place where the light is inside and from, the darkest side and the opposite where the light will be coming out from. I really do enjoy painting gems because these are small details that give a lot of character to the mini. For the wizards, generals and princes of the army, I actually included quite a lot of those in order to show the status that they had among the ranks. Lots of miniatures back then had gems in their army, so in other armies that I had, I used the gems as a contrast towards the base colors that the miniatures had. In the wood elves I included purple gems or red gems because they will be the ones contrasting the most against the green that the army will have as the base color. In the case of other armies such as my vampire counts, which you might think that shouldn't have that many gems, I actually used them in a green color to contrast against the black and the red that most of the army had. This made such a nice inclusion and it tied the army that had so many different miniatures together in a way that it was quite interesting because the details as you can see they are quite small and nevertheless they made a big difference when I painted them. So when I plan my color schemes I always decide to include small details that will give the miniatures a more interesting look and at the same time tie them together within the army itself. Hope you understand it now. If you didn't understand it before, I hope you understand it with this state-of-the-art technology. Subscribe!